Hi, we are the Registered Nurse Tutors. I am Liz. And my name is Siobhan. Today we're going to cover the skill of venipuncture. Okay, so before starting the procedure, I need to make sure I've got clean hands, clean equipment, and a clean space, clean environment. So I'm going to decontaminate my hands with 70% alcohol. We will have a video on this. You can look at it for the steps for hand hygiene. Once my hands are clean, I'm going to put on a pair of gloves and then I'm going to decontaminate my tray with 70% alcohol. Once that's done, I can gather my equipment and begin the procedure. On entering the patient zone, I'm going to clean my hands again and put on the appropriate PPE. Hi there, how are you? Hello, I'm good. My name is Siobhan, I'm the nurse in the section today and I've been asked by your doctor to take some bloods on you. He wants to check your renal bloods and he wants to check your haemoglobin. Okay. Would it be okay if we did that? Yeah, sure. Great. Have you any allergies to any medications? No. Or no? Great. No any plaster allergies, uh, band-aids? No. Okay. And have you had bloods taken before? Yes. Okay. Are you on any medications to thin your blood? Blood thinners, anticoagulants? No. No. Right, okay, that's good. And when they've taken blood on you before, what arm have they used? Um, you, I prefer this arm. Do you? Okay. Yes, no problem. Mm -hmm. Before I get go ahead with the procedure, I just need to confirm I have the right person as well. It's just a standard. Mm -hmm. So can you confirm your full name for me? My name is Judy Brown. Judy Brown, great. Thanks, Judy. And what's your date of birth? The 1st of the 1st, 1991. So, First 91, that's perfect, that all looks good. Have you a name band on? Yes. Can I check it? So Judy Brown, first of the first 91, and your hospital number is 123456. Perfect, that's okay. So um, you've used this arm previously? Yes. Um, is there a section that they've often used? Yes, uh, I specifically would like if you could try here. Okay, no yeah, problem. It works best, I found uh, that's what works best. Very good. Before continuing on with the procedure, I want to stop here and talk to you about the clinical assessment. So when you are looking at um, doing the skill of venipuncture, always use this check, choose, avoid, do not use. So check the condition of the vein, check that the, there is no bruising, no burns, marks, swelling, you know, check that it's okay to use the area. Um, like we've already discussed, check their allergy status and medication history. Then choose the vein most distal in the non-dominant hand. Choose veins that are firm, round, elastic and engorged. Free is what we say. So um, you want a vein with good rebound elasticity. It's the veins that you feel, not see, are the veins that are best to go for. And then avoid your veins that are hard, knotty, sclerosed. Avoid veins that are uneven, the journey isn't straight, um, avoid veins if there's IV fluids going in the arm and avoid veins where there's bruising, swelling, any signs of phlebitis uh, with your, and you never ever use veins in arms with AV fistulas, with lymphedema, post breast cancer or mastectomy and for fractures or for stroke patients. This is the equipment that I have gathered for the procedure. So I have a blood collection device, a needle and the vacutainer. I have an alcohol wipe, gauze swabs to clean the site after, and a band-aid, blood bottles for the collection, a tourniquet, and gloves that I will wear during the procedure. I also have my blood forms ready. I just want to take a second to show you how to assemble the equipment before we move on. This is a vacuette holder. You need to hold it in your dominant hand. So for me, that would be my right hand because I will insert my needle. And when I withdraw, I need to be able to activate my needle safety guard like so. This is my needle and I need to remove the gray cap off it. When I do that, a black dot is visible. That black dot needs to face me because it will indicate the angle my bevel is going to be at. So I'll insert it into my holder, rotate it round clockwise until it meets me at the centre. Once I remove that, I'm showing my needle and the bevel of the needle should be upright. 
So I've entered my patient zone, I'm decontaminating my hands and I'm going to put on my gloves. I'm then going to prepare my equipment. You need to follow your local policy in terms of infection control. Um, so with my gloves on, I'm preparing my needle and vacuette holder as discussed earlier. So that's there. I'm protecting the key parts. I am going to leave the cap on the needle. And with ANTT, aseptic non-touch technique, I'm going to open um, the other pieces of equipment, taking care not to touch the key parts. Okay, so now we're going to put on the tourniquet. This is a single-use disposable tourniquet. There's a flat part of the button and a raised part. The flat part goes to the patient's skin. Tourniquets should be applied tight, but not too tight. So one way to know when you're learning first is to check a radial pulse. If the radial pulse isn't present, you have your tourniquet on too tight. When applying the tourniquet, it shouldn't stay on for more than a minute. It should be about five to six centimeters above the site that you're choosing to take blood from. I'm palpating the vein. I'm looking for veins that are free. So as I said earlier, firm, round, elastic, and engorged. Follow the journey of the vein and make sure that your needle goes in at the correct angle. You don't want to repalpate once I've cleaned the site. So you need to be sure where you're going. I have a new pair of gloves on and now I am going to clean it, clean the site with a 70% alcohol wipe. I open it up and using non-touch technique, start at the point that I think I'm going to insert the needle into and work my way outward. Circular motions. To allow that to dry, while it's drying, I'm reapplying my tourniquet five to six centimeters above the chosen site. I am not going to repalpate the vein, as to do so would contaminate my field. I'm going to get my needle, which has been kept clean with the cap on, so it's still sterile. I'm going to remove the sheet and protect the key parts. With my non-dominant hand, I'm going to stabilize the vein. This should be always kept lower than the angle that you're inserting the needle. Needles should be inserted at a 10 to 30 degree angle and the bevel should always be upright. Okay, so I'm inserting my needle, that 10 to 30 degree angle, hopefully feeling a pressure drop. Then going to get my blood bottles and insert and I've got blood return there. So you have to take care not to accidentally advance the needle. You need to make sure it's kept stable. And when it's in the vein, lower it to a 10 degree angle. I'm inverting my blood bottles as per the blood collection policy. So that will depend locally. Some of them are five to six inversions. And then once I've drawn the last blood, I am going to release my tourniquet. So that's it. There is a marker on the blood bottle that indicates how far we should fill the blood to. Going to get my gauze, leave it loose on top. Okay, so I'm removing my needle, activating my needle safety guard and discarding the needle into a sharp spin. Going to put digital pressure with some gauze over the site. Um, try to um, keep your patient's arm straight. Don't encourage them to bend their arm. This can lead to hematoma formation. It can take a few seconds, up to a minute, to um, stop the bleeding. Check, and if it has stopped, gather it into your glove and remove that. And then place it down into a clinical waste bin. If the patient requires a band-aid, you could put one on, they may not. So make sure you put the correct bottle into the correct form. Make sure that your bottle is fully labelled um, before it goes in and do this at your patient's bed space. This is very important. Once it's labelled fully, pop it into the plastic at the back, peel off the sticker and pop it over there. That will seal it in. 
Make sure then that you this form is fully completed. It's already got its request. I need to now make sure the specimen date, time, and the person that took it, which would be me, writes in there as well. Having completed the procedure, I'm now going to leave my patient zone. I'm going to dispose of all high-risk waste. I'm going to take off my PPE, go to the clean utility, and clean down my tray.